Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist and today I have a little video about um, how you can take an image, a black and white image of a silhouette of something or a profile of something and turn that into a, um, a curve. In this case I used it to make trim shapes. So what I have here is an image sequence, a bunch of different images. Um, I'm loading those up into geometry nodes and then um, sampling that into a curve and then sweeping that curve around the shape to make this cool trim tool. So then you can take that and model whatever sort of room or column or whatever you want and the trim should follow it and stick to it. Um, so that's not entirely done but um, I wanted to make a video about this part of the node group showing um, how to turn an image into a curve because it seemed like kind of a cool thing that you can use for lots of different applications, not just this one. All right, so here I've just simplified this down. So we're looking at just the part of the node group that turns the image into the path. You can see here, this is the final result we get is this curve here. And um, what we're starting with is a grid and the grid I have set to be the same resolution as the pixel picture. So there's two ways you could do that. Since I knew that all of my frames were 64 by 64 pixels, I just hard coded it here to be 65. But you could also have an image node and then plug that into an image info node. And then you could get the width and add one to it and plug that into your X and the height and add one to that and plug that into your Y if um, you wanted to have a variable sized image texture. Now, one thing to note about that is um, I'm essentially using each face of this grid as a pixel. So if you have higher resolution images, this works fine, it's fast because it's 64 by 64 pixels. But if you had a high resolution image like a 1024 or a 2K or a 4K texture, you would probably want to sample less than every pixel. Um, so actually the vertices X and Y could be um, variable. Anyway, then once we have that grid, all I'm going to do is take the UV map from it and plug that into the vector of the image texture node so that we sample using the full UV coordinates. And if we view that here, we can see that on the face, um, that essentially becomes the pixels of the, of the image on that grid. So then all I'm doing is I'm going to say, are, I'm going to create a threshold. So is, are the pixel, is the pixel value greater than 0.25? And if it is, um, I'm going to delete that geometry. So you can see here I've deleted everything except the center. So now we have a boundary that we can work with that's going to become our, the outline of our silhouette here. So we can do that very simply with an, the edge neighbors node. We can say is the face count equal to one. So that's going to be all of these faces they have one face adjacent to them and not on the other side. So that's true for the boundary edges, but nothing else. Then we can separate the geometry. We can either delete or separate. Um, I separated here. So now we just have that boundary edge. Then because these uh, frames were all different sizes, you can see if we go to a different frame here, we get different shapes. Um, so then what I wanted to do was I had made all these images um, be oriented so that the bottom edge of the image was the part of the trim that was to be placed against whatever surface you were putting it on. So I just wanted to delete that bottom edge. And so the way I did that was um, if you take a bounding box, you can get the position, the minimum position of this shape, which is going to be that vertex there. And then we can just compare the position of all of the edges to the minimum y because the minimum y is going to be the furthest that way. We can say if it's within um, 0 0.02 of that, then we'll delete those edges. So then you can see we trim that out. So now we just have the curved profile of the trim, which is good because then when we resample, um, we won't waste points on this back edge here. So we can just turn this into a curve and then resample the curve. Um, I just picked a resolution value that I thought looked, if you go too high, you get the stair step back. Um, so you just go down until it sort of smooths that out. Um, you can go really low or higher. It seemed like 50-ish was a pretty good number. 
50, 60. Um, there may be other ways to smooth out the curve um, that are slightly better. Because I was making trim and sometimes those can have little grooves and stuff and that adds some detail that looks nice, I didn't mind it so much in this case, but um, you could also experiment with the fillet node or different ways to like bevel and smooth it out or sampling it based on the curvature or something. I don't know, I suspect there's a more sophisticated way of smoothing out this curve that if I needed to, I might um, have tried to figure out, but in this case, I was happy with this result. Anyway, once I had that, some of them had um, very longer straight edges still, like along the bottom or something. So yeah, this one here, you can see it has the straighter edge if we draw points. Um, you can see that there's a bunch of points along that straight edge that aren't necessary because it's perfectly straight. So um, to try to simplify that sort of like a planar decimation almost, I just delete geometry using the angle of the edge curve. And that's a group I have. And then so if it's perfectly straight, it's going to be pi. So if you pick a number, you say like greater than three, something like that, um, it'll remove the straight parts, but keep the more angled areas. Uh, the way this edge curve node works is pretty simple. There's two halves to it. This part's for if it's a mesh, so I'm separating by component, and this part's for a curve. So if it's a curve, you just sample at the index of the curve previous to next to the index of the current point. So you can see we have index, add one, subtract one, modulo it so it loops around. And then we just want to sample the position of those two adjacent points in the curve. And then we can subtract the position of our current point from those two points, normalize it to get a direction vector. If you do a dot product, it tells you how much those two vectors, um, how similar they are. And if you put that into an arc cosine node, then it will return the angle in radians between those two directions. And once we have the angle in radians, we can detect if it's greater than or close to pi, and then delete it if it is to simplify. Um, then, oh yes, this was just an option um, in case you wanted to flip the trim over and put this part on this side. Um, I just added a basic sort of mirror modifier in here. So this is the position with the x coordinate flipped to negative one, which uh, would invert your normals. So then I reverse the curve to solve that problem. And then that just goes into a switch with a flip control here. So we can see we can flip it. And then um, I just move the it to the corner. So if we take the bounding box again, look at the minimum position, and then set the position to we'll subtract the minimum from the position, basically, we put we put this corner here right at the origin point. You can see like that. Um, then I had to rotate it so that it would sweep along the curve properly, but that was just to rotate it. And then it goes up here into this. This whole part up here, it takes whatever shape you have and does like a Boolean slice to get a loop around the shape and then it uh, turns that into a curve. And then when that curve gets all the way over here, I sweep that sh that profile that we just made along um, the curve and then join it into the result. So then you can stack several of those on top of each other, throw a bevel model bevel modifier on the whole thing, and you get this cool trim tool. And then because this is an image sequence, you can just cycle through frames of the different images and get different profiles for your trim. So, Anyway, I think this is turning into a pretty nifty little tool, and I thought I'd share um, how I, or I think being able to turn an image sequence into a curve is cool, especially because you can load up a whole sequence of images and then very quickly like load preset shapes um, without having to have a collection of curves that were profiles that you drew or um, something like that. So anyway, be, just as a way to get a lot of variety into a modifier that's like baked in sort of like data that's saved that you don't have to manually input um, seemed like a pretty cool way to do that. So thought I'd share that little setup there. Um, other than that, um, I've made a bunch of tools for Blender. 
with geometry nodes and things like that. So if you're interested in any of those, I'd recommend checking them out. Links to all of that's in the description. There's tons of information on my website and they're available both on Superhive and on Gumroad. Um, but other than that, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.